Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome to the Animation Station Podcast, episode 188. My name is Josh. And I'm Harold. Perfect. And today we're going to be talking about the... Well, it's new to us. It's new to us. The movie came out in 2016. Um, but it's getting a an American release over here, an American English release. We're going to be talking about the new movie from Tricos Worldwide, um, awesome distributors, and we're going to be talking about Finding Santa. Finding Santa, exactly. dude. It was is a very uh, very interesting watch, in my opinion. It was. Uh, but before we do that, there is there is a little bit of news that we have to go through. Um, news wise, Frozen Two came out since last episode so everyone's been seeing that and losing their minds um uh charlie and i were able to go to the uh amazon did a screening of the aronauts uh starring <clears throat> excuse me uh felicity jones and eddie redmayne uh oh, they did nice. a uh, yeah it's at one of the like one of the parking areas at the rose bowl in pasadena they set up this big huge event they had uh, they basically turn it into like an 1840s fair so there was like fair food games everyone was in period costumes talking in period stuff it was really cool and then we got an actually so we did that for an hour and then they had you go out. Uh, it was all outside. They had you go out, and we were able to uh, actually watch the film outside. They had a hot air balloon that was uh, had the film playing on it. Uh, what? Yeah, dude. It was, That's it was crazy. pretty legit. Yeah. Uh, and we did post some stuff on the animation Instagram, so if you want to check that out, just head over, t- over there. Um, we took some pictures of the event and all kinds of cool stuff. I think you can see the... Uh, um, the blimp in the background with the Aronauts logo on it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was tight, it was man. it was a fun time. It was it was really really good. Got to eat yeah, all kinds of free saying, food and it was great. Yeah, I was gonna say I remember you saying you were gonna go to that. It sounded pretty cool. Yeah, dude, you need to come out here and then we can all go to I these things to. and it'll be amazing. I do need to. I need to come visit. You. I have a reason to get out there now, so I need to just get out there and just hang out. And uh, you just came out, uh, I think, last time, because we talked about it a little bit. I don't think we mentioned it on the pod the last time that we did the episode. Um, but you just did a podcast that uh, the, was the hentai episode, right? We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, so to tell tell everybody a little bit about that, like how, how that episode got. It was cool, man. I mean, it was a little and bit of a different. And it's not what you think, guys. It's yeah. not what you think. Yeah, it was like a little bit of a different approach. It actually, I, I, you know, thought about doing this episode that was like more of an approach of, you know, what what's like the history of this and what impact does this have on viewers type of a thing. Um, but when I, when I would just like casually mention that I was doing this episode to like friends or like people that had been on before, it was just funny to see like the reactions. And so it's like, man, this is going to be really funny because everyone that I've mentioned it to, they're like, ugh, like, like, you know, like you're just talking about smut. But it's like, no, this is like going to be a very different approach. So what it ended up being was more of a uh, very like empirical data driven stats laden episode with like, you know, we started out with like the history of uh, sexuality in Japanese art just from like a traditional view um, and how that kind of laid the foundation for hentai. Mm -hmm. And then in the actual hentai um, portion we talked about different stats. Um, there's some interesting stats. I guess Pornhub does like a year in review where like it shows you like a lot of their stats from like the previous year. And so it was interesting just to see, you know, that among men and women, it's like the number three overall search term and people in Japan are 300% more likely to click on hentai. Like all, all these like really interesting stats we were able to like, you know, kind of take and you know, back up a lot of our, our opinions with, which was, so ended up being really interesting, but yeah, it was, it was like very different than like, you know, just talking about crazy shows or whatever, Mm -hmm, but it was just like definitely a funny thing that had to do a lot of interesting research for. (laughs) Yeah, it was, I, unfortunately I haven't had the chance to listen to that episode yet. It's, it's on, it's on my, it's, it's ready, 
but I've been behind with podcasts, unfortunately. Uh, same, same, man. I feel you. Like, oh, geez. Um, oh, uh, another thing we were able to hit up, we did go to Designer Con. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You sent me weekend. those uh, prints that you'd gotten of those Pokemon. Those were tight. Uh, br- dude, okay, so that is a convention that um, I think you would really enjoy. It's a lot of it's a lot of like urban artists and like new stuff. So a lot of it is like when I think when I think you know like like downtown Oklahoma City type stuff, like that new like age stuff where right. they, they've got all kinds of like cool trendy things. That's what I think. Like that's basically what's here. That's so tight. I think I think next year, if you can make it, I think you need to hit up Designer Con. That'd be like fun, they man. had like, they had shoes, they had street art. Um, you know, all kinds of really cool stuff. And it's, it was, it was really interesting. I, as cool as it was, uh, it definitely wasn't for me. Like <laughs> there was a lot of like modern stuff there that like is, I, I'm definitely not into cause right. I'm a wuss bag. Like I don't like skulls and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you want a skull? Guess what? That's this entire place. Oh, really? Like, it's like that's like big right now for them. Yes, um, and like yeah, and a lot of street art, which is a lot of it's really really cool. Like there were these ones. It was it was this one place they did uh, like this this art on like Nike boxes, and oh, it was some tight. of the best stuff I've ever seen. Huh? But I was that's like, really cool. Mm, it's a Nike button. There were also like these three bags that they had, and I was like, all three of these bags they looked awesome. But I was not gonna spend five hundred bucks a bag, Jeez. for a bag that had really cool art on it. I was like, not even if Banksy himself had made it, but like, blew a bag on a bag. It. That's crazy. Oh man, but I mean, it was cool. Like I, I'm glad I went. There were cool stuff. I got those Pokemon prints. Yeah, I think. Um, I think there's a guy. Um, I'm in a, like a organization here it's like a club called aiga it's like uh the american um graphic artists club basically mm-hmm. and there's like a chapter here in oklahoma city and they we just had a guest speaker his name's brandon land and uh he's from here in piedmont oklahoma but he like lives out in san francisco now he works at facebook messenger oh nice but but he's worked at like facebook proper and then worked at like dropbox like he's worked at a lot of cool places but he got to do a lot of cool, like he got to do some shoes for like Nike and some different projects for them, and like some cool like stuff with like their boxes and stuff. So, I think he mentioned that there was something like it might have been that same convention that was going on that he said he was going to be going to, but it was just really cool to see like a guy from Oklahoma doing like really cool stuff like that. Yeah, like it, it was it was cool. Like we we met some people that were from all over. Like the girl I got the Pokemon stuff, she was from Canada and she came down noise um i i met a guy who is going to be doing some cool little things for us um we got some we got some merch in the pipeline that's gonna have our logo and stuff on it that's you know kind of cool looking stuff that uh we're just waiting on all the final stuff to go through um so we we did some marketing without actually you know doing marketing so that's cool man that's always nice yeah it was it was not bad at all um, you got anything else you want to chat about? Uh, no, nah, man, no, nah, man. That's basically it. Uh, we talked about that movie had coming out, but I hadn't, I hadn't went and watched it. Um, we talked a little bit about Mandalorian before that, but I think you've already talked about that on your show. Uh, yeah, we did like the first two episodes of Mandalorian, and we're gonna talk yeah. about the rest of Mandalorian uh, here at the end of the episode. So if you haven't, nice. if you're not cut up on Mandalorian earmuffs, um. <laughs> But before that, let's go ahead and talk about our uh, our main topic today, which is Finding Santa. Um, it is a 2016 um, Danish and Swedish film uh, that is getting an English release over here. Uh, it comes out on December the 1st, so it just came out yesterday. Um, you can uh, It's going to be available on... All of the streaming services, Amazon, you know, you know, all the all the good ones, um, mainly Amazon, because I mean, honestly, that's what I use. Um, it's going to be available uh, on Tuesday the third, so you know, you guys can go check it out there. Uh, but yeah, it's called Finding Santa, and a little brief, little brief plot uh, synopsis here. 
Uh, eight-year-old Julius lives at an orphanage. That's the first sentence, so you know it's going to be a sad story. Um, <laughs> eight-year-old Julius lives at an orphanage. Julius is a bit of an outsider and secretly still believes in Santa Claus. When he is confronted with the fact that Santa Claus may just be the headmaster of the orphanage dressing up, Julius loses not only his belief in Santa, also, but also his belief in himself. That's a weird way that they did that yeah um (laughs) you know imdb man it's one of those things like i don't know who wrote it but you know um he not only loses him but also faces himself but then something strange happens and julius suddenly finds himself in a magical world all right so uh this is uh, this uh this film um like i said it was it's originally a uh swedish and danish film that we got over here unfortunately and I forgot to ask uh, the good people at Tricos. They allowed us to screen this film. Um, thank you guys so much for that. Um, they, uh, I, I should have asked for an English cast list because from the screener that we got, it was the English cast list was not in the credits. Yeah, I noticed that whenever we were talking about it. I was just like, oh, man, because I didn't think about it. And when you mentioned that, I was like, what? What is it? Like, what is it on there? And so I went and looked at it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is not not who we just heard. <laughs> exactly. Because, like, the, one, of the, one of the, like, Krampus, for instance, I'm like, I, and again, I could be wrong, but I'm about 75% sure that was Ben Diskin. Um, oh, really? He voiced uh, uh, number one and number two in Codename Kim's Se- Kids Next Door. Oh, Nigel. Nigel. Nigel Uno. And wow. I don't remember what two was. Um, I don't care what his name is either. He was like my least favorite of the of the kids <laughs> next door. Was he the airplane guy? Yeah, he was the airplane guy. Oh uh, yeah, he was a dork. Um, but he's also been in like Agretzico. He's been in a lot of animes. He's been in. He's a very good voice actor. Been in a lot of stuff. And I like I said, I'm like ninety. Well, I now I'm like ninety percent sure it was him. Huh. Well, we'll, not, we'll never know. You need to I, ask your boys over at. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna shoot him a, I'm gonna shoot him an email and be like, hey, yeah, can I get that like cast list? Because <laughs> mainly for me, because like another person, I don't. It, it may be her, but it may not be her. I think Julius was Jules de Young. Oh really? But I could be wrong. See, that's like I don't know. It's just tough because it's like I don't have a good enough ear for that, and I just like was relying on the cast list and then when i saw that it was like not the american i was like oh dang it like who did this end up being i wonder yeah like when when it first came out it was like original cast by and i was like oh this probably right. isn't a good sign and then it was like okay maybe it'll be at the very end unfortunately it wasn't uh um, i know yeah when it, it was like because i was waiting for it to roll on the credits so it was like the one time i was gonna watch the credits just to see who like the cast was mm-hmm. and then like instead of saying cast in order of appearance it was like fleur hergen and i was like <laughs> what is this like dang it's gonna be like the original whatever language this is in like yeah i mean and i think that may be my only like big complaint about the film was was that cast list at the end because honestly like the animation the animation style is is unique but i didn't i I didn't not like it you know like it was it was it was it reminded me of something but i i unfortunately i can't remember the series i think i was getting like like almost like not really like nightmare before christmas-esque type of things but like that that type of like if it had been made today like i I feel like that would have been like the type of animation that they would have used and like kind of like with the looks of the um not like our because mainly we have we have three main characters really um but i don't think it's yeah i don't think it it really it, it looked that like kind of like that so it's 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 weird like i i like the animation i don't know how to describe the animation because it's not like full like 3d cg it's like it's right. got like a little bitty mix of something in it yeah it's like almost like stop motiony maybe I did, it's kind of like um you know what it reminded me of a lot was james and the giant peach yes james and yes i can definitely see like you know Contrast with James and the Giant Peach. And maybe that's um, what I was thinking. I think maybe I was thinking James and Giant Peach. Not I was Man thinking that. Because I don't like, and then like Christmas. Yeah, I was thinking that and maybe like Wallace and Gromit or something. like. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it's definitely, it definitely has, because like a European animation 
definitely has a different feel than American animation. Right. And so, yeah, I can definitely see that, you know, a more of a European influence than something more, uh, more American or Canadian even. Right. Yeah, it was, it was trippy for sure. And it was like, I, I get what you're saying. It, you're, I kept getting caught in the middle ground of like, is this like CG or is this like, like classic South Park, like paper, paper stop motion type of thing? Like, I don't know. It was really trippy. Yeah. I mean, um, I did like, I did like, so I just finished the Dragon Prince, uh, season three. And, oh yeah. Speaking uh, of quirky animation. Exactly. Um, Shout out for all of our cool friends over at Wonderstorm. Um, but uh, the main character does he's got that blue shirt and he's got the vest and he's got the red uh, the red scarf that has the bell on it for almost all of the movie. Right. Um, I like that because I'm like, oh, that's exactly what the main character of Dragon Prince wears. <laughs> Literally wears a blue shirt, a vest, and a red scarf. It's that common uh, hero. It is hero it costume. Is. <laughs> like this is this is your this is your main protagonist. He shall wear blue and have a scarf. Oh man! So so, what did you think of the story? Like I, you, you sent me a text. Uh, I think when you you had either finished it or you were watching it, it was like it was a. You said it was like a low key horror film. It, it was like I, and it was just like low key. Some of the scenes were scaring me with Krampus. I was like, oh, like man, if I was a kid, this would kind of freak me out. Yeah, like it's like so watching it, it was like. There, there were there were definitely parts where I was like, "This is going to take like this really, really dark turn," and then they and then it would be like, "Nope, just kidding," and it's like, "Oh yeah, you got me." And then at the end, uh, and we're not we're not we're gonna do our best not to spoil the film because we definitely want you guys to check it out. Um, yeah, for sure. But there's there's a part at the end, and I'm just like, "Oh, okay, we went there." <laughs> like, all right, yeah, there's a, all right. There's a couple parts where I'm like, "Oh man, like, <laughs> what the heck are they doing here?" But I don't know. Um, it's interesting, and I definitely couldn't guess what was going to happen. So oh no, definitely, a, yeah. Know, like I was, I was, like, I was, was cool. sitting there, and I was just like, "So, well, like, th- okay." So there's a part that uh, with the with the elves, uh huh. And I was like, "These guys are going to like murder him or like sacrifice him to something." Yeah, the, they they, they were a- seeing... they were acting really sus. They were like nefarious. It was yeah. Like, are they like good guys or are they like? When 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 they're like oh is, when they're like uh, when uh, Sarah uh, Sophina uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the angel is like he's gonna be the new Santa I say I'm not gonna spoil and then I spoil he's like he's yeah. gonna be the new Santa <laughs> um, and like the the one elf guy that they rescue is like oh okay really and he's like side eyeing another elf when like he's telling like when Julius is telling them the plan. And he's like, mm-hmm, yeah, no, yeah, we'll uh, we'll follow you. And I'm just like, this little guy, or like, right? He's a uh, he gonna like murder somebody, right? I know it was. He's yeah. definitely killed those other reindeer. Like some he's of buried it was them. Just like some of it was just very, I don't know, some of the tone, and I don't know if it was like the way they meant it to come across, but some of it's just like, are they being genuine there, or are they, is there like a nefarious thing going on, like? I don't know. It, it was just interesting. Kind of adds to like the, the thing of like, like I was saying, like you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, and like, then you don't, there was, you don't know what's, which way it's gonna go. And then there was, uh, it was, uh, it was Herman, right? The 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 big pig, the marzipan pig, the marzipan pig. Yeah, when he was like, "How would you like it if someone took a bite out of you?" I was like, "When he finds out, is he like gonna like bite his arm off or something?" I know. Like, almost like... there were a lot of these bits where it was just like, it feels like. It's gonna be so dark and so bad. Like someone's gonna come out and stab somebody. Like the the two boys that are picking on Julius. I'm like, they're gonna like. They literally plan to lock him in the shed and never come to get him out. Those again. kids were terrible kids. I was like, these kids are sociopaths. What's going on here? And then it's like, help! I'm drowning, and I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I'd be like, see ya. It's like, it's all right. You can let him. Drown. He does that. It's okay you know to that let meme a couple of the, the meme of the kid where he does the peace sign and then he he like disappears. Basically, he's just like. That's what would have been. Nah, 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 nah. You just see a thumb come the, out uh, of the water. Man, the um, the pig too. Like the the teeth on the pig kind of freaked me out. 
And it was just like, man, there's like a lot of things that are like unintentionally kind of like scaring me in this mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> there is there. And of course, Josh liked it because there was the very hint of a love story. Yeah, it was between like between young Julius and Klaus that uh, not Klaus. That would have been weird. Uh, Julius and <laughs> Sophia. Yeah, you're like, you could tell she was just like, when other when the other guy or the other like uh, kids make fun of him and then she's not. You're like, oh, okay, she's like, the uh, the empath and she's like kind of care. She cares about him. Mm-hmm. She so she, go, she goes she like goes to love find interest. him. Yeah, and everything. They hold hands. I was like, bro, this eight year old got more play than I do. Like. <laughs> Hey, some people got it, some people don't, uh, bro. I, de- I definitely missed that course. Uh, private school did not help. Um, also, Shawnee, Oklahoma didn't help. Jesus. Ah, uh, jeez. Um, but yeah, no, like, I, I, re- I really enjoyed the film. Like, um, yeah, like, all, all the little parts. And like you said, like, it was very hard to guess what was going to happen next. Which, I mean, yeah. like, I, I, I saw Frozen 2. I knew exactly where they were going with Frozen 2. Like li- like maybe 15 minutes into the movie, they they go to a bit and like they they tell you about a thing and I'm just like, "Oh, okay, so that's that's how that's going to work." Gotcha. Oh, and you know, screw it. I'll spoil Frozen 2. Who cares? Um so there's there's a bridge and it's like, "Oh, yeah, if we like this is the bridge that connects our, these two kingdoms." And I'm like, yeah, just knock that bridge down. It's gonna get blown up. And what do you know? Guess what happens in the movie? It gets blown. They they oh, knock God. that they knock that bridge down. I'm like, yeah, they kind of like foreshadowed that. At the, foreshadowed. They, they, for, they foreshadowed so much stuff in that movie <laughs> that I'm just like, no wonder people are saying this movie's dark. It's all in shadow. Like seriously, like wow. they're just like telegraphed the entire thing. And then you watch this, and I was just like. I'm I'm going to get it to where like, you know, he's going to, you know, make it back home because that would be a weird ending. Um but it's like it's just, I I wasn't expecting how we got there. Like the journey was really really good. Like the story was was definitely not what I was expecting. Um and yeah, it it it, it just worked. Like we have uh, our hero goes through goes through a, a, a trying time. Uh he's uh not in the best of circumstances growing up. Um, then he gets whisked away into this, uh, magical Narnia world. Um, more trials ensue, um, comes out the victor and gets to go home. Just like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I was going to say, yeah, it is like a very much a, you know, there's only so many literary devices you can mm-hmm. use yeah. to kind of, you know, push your narrative, but yeah, it's like all the stories. It's definitely that told. classic like underdog of like this kid didn't have anybody and then he kind of he gets to become the hero, you know, in his story. So, mm-hmm. it was cool. I mean, it's a good feel good story type of thing, you know. Yeah, cuz I mean, like the whole bit which I guess is not a spoiler because you guys are going to watch the film. Um he is he's an orphan. He is dropped off on at this orphanage's door on Christmas Eve. And he gets the red scarf and there's a little bell attached to it. So he runs around the entire time with this, um, with this, uh, with the scarf, with the red scarf with the bell on it. Um, and then at the end, the hero hangs up his bell. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, <laughs> it happens. You've got to do what you got to do, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. It's I've, very symbolic. I've done, I've done I my duty. Exactly, yeah. Because, like, you get all these bells and you see that this one is missing. And he's like, you know, yeah. I'm gonna take my bell. I'm gonna hang up my bell. I'm done. All the other heroes before him had hung up their bell, mm-hmm. and he needed. He saw there was like six other bells. I was like, whose yeah. bells are these? And it's like he had. He didn't have like he didn't have like the friends really. So uh, it's like, yeah, I don't really have the friends. So I have to make my own friends. Basically, I make my own Christmas. Right. Then at the end, you know, he's like, you know what, little child, whose name I don't think was ever mentioned, you may have this box. I know. I was like, "What?" Like, well, I guess she was he, like, can, he can never go back. Yeah, I so guess that's like, true. Oh bro, yeah, you stuck there now. Here, have a box. Sorry about you. Uh, so, so if you were to rank this uh, film, we do we do our fives, like out of fives. Um, what would you what would you give this film? I'm gonna I'm like I'll, I'll go first. I'll make it easy. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm gonna give this a nice four out of five, like four out of five Dipper Pines. 
because I really liked the story. I thought the voice acting was really, really good. Um, the music was good. It's like when we when we needed you know a good little bit of bah, 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 we we got a we got a lot of cool stuff. But it was all Christmassy. Like we got we got like a really good accompaniments, but like it was like Christmas and it was really nice. I, I thought I, I, it worked well. It worked really well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Yeah, I, I liked it. I definitely like the animation style was like very different. I think if I was to give it something, I'd give it like a three out of five, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I I can see that. Um, it, the 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 art style definitely isn't for everybody. Yeah, I. But it's so hit or miss with me with like some of these different styles though, because like uh, I guess just like I don't know if it's just with the subject matter and like the story coupled with it, but I was just like. To me, it was kind of made it quirky and kind of added to the story with this specific animation style, like with this movie. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, so, I mean, definitely uh, definitely go rent it, check it out, buy it when it comes out. Um, it's worth a watch. Yeah, definitely. It comes out um, when this episode comes out. It's going to come out tomorrow. So check it out on the 2nd of December. Um, and yeah, it's going to be available... Um, yeah, like I said, Amazon, iTunes, you know, direct Vimeo, uh, Google Play, Fandango, all those fun places. So basically, wherever you can, you know, get any sort of streaming, uh, streaming, you know, content, it's going to be there. So definitely check it out. Yes. All right, let's go. Okay, so again, earmuffs, everybody. Let's talk about the Mandalorian a little bit. Uh, Certainly. What What would have been your thoughts on these four episodes that we've gotten? Man, it's, like, pretty, like, I was just talking to someone about this, like, how there hasn't been a single lightsaber in, and it's, like, I couldn't be more excited Thank about that. Thank goodness. Okay, so the one problem that I did have was um, the baby. I don't really? like that the baby had has force powers. Oh. Well, we only I mean, saw it, like, the one time, but I still don't yeah. like it. So, uh, I saw a thing that was, like, um... Someone said that they talked to Baby Groot about Baby Yoda. They got a quote about it, and it's just like, it just says, I am Groot. But someone uh, quote tweeted it, and they were like, I would break Baby Groot in half and set him on fire to keep Baby Yoda warm. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, so that's that's another thing. Like, the Baby Yoda bit. It ain't Yoda. Well, I mean, it's the race, you know what but I mean? But Yoda, like the the, Yoda is not the race. Well, because we, people, we, it's like the, the one thing people have to reference. I, the I race, know, is what I'm but saying. still, why don't? Why isn't anybody being like it's Baby Yaddle? Y'all remember yeah, Yaddle know. from Episode One, the Man. other of Yoda's species that's on the Jedi Council. Y'all remember Yaddle? I'm like, let's call it. Let's call it Baby Yaddle. Why don't they ever say what that race is called? Though I wonder. I don't know. I it may be extended universe, possibly, but I have no idea. Maybe. It's just not, it's not canon, oh, yeah, so it no, doesn't they're, matter. They're, they're not canon. They're going to keep it canon. <laughs> um, let's see. What, let's see. What else we got? Um, like, I did this see. Because uh, this is what, five years after Jedi? Isn't, yeah, I was isn't trying to think of the timeline. Said? Yeah. Yeah, so. Something it's, like that. It's good. Um, the Mandalorians are weird. I don't ever remember them having this oath of you can't take off your helmet. I don't think that was I guess, ever a thing. I guess in front of other people, because he said, she said, went the the lady in the last episode, when did you take off your helmet last? He's like yesterday. He she was like, well, in so, in front of someone. Well, and he was like, oh, I was a kid. Well, Django didn't get the memo. Well, like, I was thinking that I was like, didn't he have his helmet off at some point? Django has his helmet off about seventy five percent of his scenes in that movie. Well, I was thinking, and I hadn't thought about it, like, hadn't gone back and looked at it, but I was like, I'm pretty sure there's scenes where he doesn't have his helmet on. Like, I guess, I don't know. All of... He was rogue. Like, 90% of his time on Kamino, his helmet is off. In fact, like, he um, hides his armor from Obi-Wan. And then, like, uh, when they're at Geonosis, he's like, his helmet is off, and he's, like, chatting with Dooku. And I'm like, bro. He don't care. Helmet. <laughs> helmet discipline. And I don't even um, think, like, in, like, in this, like... I think because I think Clone Wars is now canon, um, but like yeah, like in Clone Wars they keep they have their helmets off. Even in Rebels, which I know is canon, there are Mandalorians that don't have their helmets on all the time. I'm like, when did this happen? 
Maybe it's just him specifically. He's like, I don't do that. Well, I don't know. The other ones, I, I guess, I don't know. Maybe, hmm. Because even, because like they show like in episode one when he like first goes to the Mandalorians, there's like little baby Mandos running around with helmets. Right. So I don't know if maybe that's something they created for the show or maybe they're like, well, since all the Mandos are basically dead, we're like the last ones left. Maybe it's like what they do now after. Yeah. After the Empire falls, like, now we're af- like, yeah, after post Empire, it's like, hey, this is a thing we do now because we want to keep our few numbers safe. Yeah, kind of a thing, which is cool. I get that. That's that's not bad. Um, I like John Favreau being a being a Mandalorian. That's pretty cool. Did you see? Um, this last episode was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, at the end, I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, like, that's awesome. She directs? Like, that's not bad. Like, that was, that was a she good does everything. episode, apparently. She well, runs her, from T-Rexes and high heels. Her dad's a director, too, so. Mm-hmm. Good old Richie Cunningham. That's yeah. a um, Happy Days reference, kids. <laughs> Happy Days was uh, an old TV show. TV, but, kids. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I've been liking it, man. I, I uh... I was late on the Disney tra- Disney Plus train because uh, my wife takes a lot of convincing. You know, she's a little, keep a tight belt on the budget there. But yeah. her uh, her dad ended up getting it, and her sister came over and was like, "Oh, we got Disney Plus," and like signed us in. I was like, "God bless you." And then you went and paid for it. Yes, you did. And then, mm-hmm. and then we went and paid for there it. There you yep. go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good looking out. Yeah, I got you, bro. Um, but no. Uh, I, okay, so have you guys watched anything other than like The Mandalorian on there? Um, I have been watching. Um, I restarted uh, Gargoyles. Really? To see what it was like, you know what I mean? It's like one of those things of like I liked that show when I was a kid, but I was like, is this good because it's good, or is this but good because I have nostalgia for it and. It's been pretty, like, I'm only, like, three episodes in, but I'm, like, pretty interested. And, like, I didn't re- guess to remember a lot about the lore with, like, Scotland. So I'm, like, this is pretty good. And freaking Keith David sounds like God himself. Yeah. Well, what's also great is, like, that entire series, it was filmed on the same lot as Star Trek The Next Generation. That's why half the cast in that is from Star Trek The Next Generation. That's what, yeah, um... I had a guy on the show not that long ago that talked about gargoyles and how that so many people from Star Trek were were like uh, voice actors on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess they do a whole like um, there's like a whole Shakespearean arc of like they do King Lear or something in gargoyles. He was telling me, oh, I, I was like, man, it's like a very ambitious cartoon for yeah. like a kids' cartoon. You know, like you do, like. <laughs> Like they did, like Gargoyles was one of those shows that I never got into as a kid. Um, just because I was like, ah, eh, I don't. They look scary. Like I said, I I was oh a, yeah, I was, you don't a, like I was way bigger of a wuss growing up. That's uh, all right. But yeah, like the only, I've only watched uh, The Mandalorian and I watched uh, Miracle. Those those are the only two things the, I've watched. Yeah, the skating, the hockey movie. The hockey movie. <laughs> Oh, that's actually I watched that too, and remember the Titans and. Ah, oh, see, I didn't watch Remember the Titans. Like I wanted to go through the Mighty Ducks again because they're 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 redoing Mighty Ducks. Oh. And I'm wait, like, they're making new ones. Yes, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, you man. know what they should do? No, no, no. Hear, hear me out on this one. What do you think about this? So for a Mighty Ducks Disney Plus series, um, you take uh Joshua Jackson's character, uh huh, whose name I cannot remember. Charlie Bombay? Char- it? Well, it's not Bombay. Or no, no, no. Gordon Bombay, but it was Charlie something, Yeah, Charlie, right? whatever his name is. Um, so you get it, Char- you take Charlie, and he goes back to wherever it was, um, New York or who? Minnesota, Minnesota. was it? Minnesota. Yeah, who, you know, where they play. We're hockey. shaky here on the details. Uh, it's been years. <laughs> um, so, uh, so he goes, and he actually uh, has to teach hockey. Because, I mean... If I remember correctly, like he barely played hockey in the second movie, and he didn't play hockey at all in the third movie, right? He was just like a coach in the third movie. 
something weird. Man, I haven't seen those in a long time either, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is because he was trying. He was macking on that one girl, like the yeah, entire the, movie. The uh, goalie. No, the goalie was like macking on him. He was macking on the uh, the other chick. Oh, I don't even remember another girl in that. Yeah, because he doesn't get with the goalie. He doesn't get with what was her name? Cat. I think, I think it, so. I think her yeah. name is Cat. Um, she was bad. All I remember is that someone told me I looked like Goldberg, and I f- never felt more disrespected. And you in my were life. like Goldberg. I was like, bruh, don't ever disrespect hey, me man, like that in my at life. At least, okay. So I worked at my my last, uh, uh, well, actually not my last job. Like the the job before, you know, the one, the green one. Um, Yeesh. So I worked there, and one of my old TLs, I was wearing a cardigan one day, and she meant it <laughs> nicely. But she was like, she was like, you know what? You kind of look like Danny DeVito. And I was like, what? (laughs) And like the entire cube like turned around and they were like, what did you say? And she was like, you know, like he looks really nice, you know, when he wears like this stuff. And it's like, no. And I was like, you're telling me I look like a four foot tall, like gargoyle man, a fat gargoyle man who's like, hey, my name's Frank. I'm like, is that what you think? I look like the oh, pink one? Man. And I was like, what? And she was like, no, 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 no. Like, I mean, like, the way you dress, up was great. I was like, you say I dress like the pink one? Yeah. She was backtracking like crazy. Yeah, dude, made, it was You bad. make me feel better about the Goldberg thing. Yeah, I you're welcome. It. At least you were never compared to Danny DeVito. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm like, I'm not that round. <laughs> hurts. Your soul left your body when she said that, I'm Basically, sure. yes. Like, it was one of those, like... She said it, and then it took more time than it should have to process for everyone. And it was like, wait, did you just call me Danny DeVito? Danny DeVito, Christ Almighty. But uh, like a young spry Danny yeah, DeVito, right? Yeah, a good right? Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Like, before he married that girl from Cheers. Um, good God. Like, uh, that's, ugh, it was, anyway. Um, but anyway, so uh, Charlie has to... Uh, train another group of hockey players but it's an all girls team of hockey players oh that would be pretty cool right i think that would be interesting because then you can yeah. do like a because like i don't know if there's ever been like a girls hockey team like show other than like the couple seasons that they did in uh letter kenny oh yeah huh I don't know, man. That would be a very interesting reboot, though. Yeah, like I, I think like I'd if, probably I'd probably watch. Like, yeah, if I think if they did it like that, I think they would do really, really well. Man, that's a good idea. Well, now I'm wondering what Joshua Jackson's character's name is, and his name was Charlie Conway. Conway, that's what it was. Very close to Bombay. <laughs> well, uh, Bombay, I was I forgot about Gordon Bombay. Was, to Gordon what's Bombay. his name? Uh. Isn't with Emilio Estevez? Isn't one of the Bash brothers? He was on Daredevil, right? Yeah, he was uh, Foggy. He Nelson. was Foggy, yeah. Which is like, dang, son. Like, talk about glow up. Um. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So Mandalorian. Like, m- my biggest problem is like the Force stuff. I'm glad it was only in the one episode. I'm glad we haven't seen any more of it. I don't want to see any more of it. What? You don't. I, you 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 want to see more Force? That means more Jedi. I just want to see cool stuff. I don't know. I didn't have any qualms with that personally. I but. mean, yeah. It was, I mean, it was fine. Like, I mean, I, uh, I I I love the show. Like, it's it's more Star Wars than I ever thought Star Wars has been in the longest time. Like that third episode was very very Star Wars, and I really really liked it. With yeah, all the, the the end with all the like jet packing man yeah. does, I was like, oh, and he's like, I gotta get me one of those. Hey, I oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say that. Line I was like, yes, sir, like, you dang. do. You need to get yourself a jet pack. I really like the uh, so I like the transitions, the swipe transitions oh, they between look good. scenes. Um, that's pretty cool. It's classic Star Wars, and then um, what was the other thing? The oh, music's really the, good too. The, that intro bumper where it's like Star Wars and it goes through all the helmets. I'm yes. like, man, that is so clean. It's really nice. It's it's a thousand times better than the stupid Marvel ones. Oh, like I wish I they would. Ta- I wish they would take those out. Oh, the Marvel intro. Yeah. gotcha. The DC one's not that bad. Like since they changed it, but like the, the Marvel logo I didn't. Yeah, like the Marvel ones just oh, it's it's just too much and it's just shite. <laughs> um, 
much like their films. Uh, anyway, uh, I, the fourth episode, I really like that they were like, you know what we should do? We should do Seven Samurai, but Star Wars, and only two of them. <laughs> it was very, yeah, like that old, uh, that whole tropey. It, it's like we were saying earlier, it's like there's only so many literary devices. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, if, if we look at Seven Samurai, it's like, they did Seven Samurai, and then America got it, and they were like, hmm, maybe not Samurai. Let's do Cowboys and call it the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Wasn't... Weren't westerns like rip off of samurai movies? Oh, though? all of them are, yes. Yeah, so does that mean it makes sense, I guess? And even, you know, westerns are rip off of other westerns. Like, there's two movies, both starring John Wayne, um, one called Rio Bravo, and the other one called Rio Grande, and the only difference is Dean Martin's in one. Which one? What? I can't remember. Well, one's Grande. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, but, like... but it's literally the exact same movie, except one's got Dean Martin. Same yeah, premise, like... same everything, couple of the cast members change, and Dean Martin. That's the only difference. And you're like, all right. <laughs> Can't wait for your uh, Westerns podcast. Oh, to yeah. Start. Uh, we're going to call it um, s- s- the, the Animation Station Spittoon. I don't know. Um, starring Danny DeVito. Starring Danny DeVito. Dude, that kills me. I'm sorry. Hurts, That's the dude. funniest thing I ever heard. Like, 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 the, am I the penguin? Am I walking around? Like, do I eat fish and <laughs> The entire time? She was all out of pocket for that, my guy. I, I don't guess. know what she was thinking. Like, at least not, I mean, not even a good penguin. Not even Burgess Meriwether penguin. Sorry. Burgess Meredith penguin. Not Meriwether. Or just Meredith Penguin, like from like the '66 Batman, who's like, nyah, 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 nyah. breaks my little heart to hear that she did you like that, my I guy. Know it hurts. Not, oh, it hurts. I couldn't even be Christopher Walken in that movie, man. Dude, that's crazy. By the way, that, also, that's also a great Christmas movie that people forget is a Christmas movie. Uh oh, the Batman movie. Yeah, Batman Returns, totally a Christmas Roy. movie. Literally, it takes place on Christmas, just like Jurassic World, also a Christmas movie. The one I always hear is Die Hard. Every, everyone goes Die Hard, and it's like, yeah. guys, Jurassic World, but it's not a Christmas movie. Yeah, in the airport, there's Christmas decorations. They're playing Christmas music. It's a Christmas movie. Also, snow. Also, snow? Yeah, there's snow at the beginning of the movie, you know, when they're leaving. Oh, and he's like, I forgot. Say bye to your girlfriend. <laughs> that was a good impression. I, I think so. Um, yeah, so now, I've, anyway, The Mandalorian. Tangents, guys. Uh, the Mandalorian, I'm really liking The Mandalorian. It's, uh, it, it's really good. Um, I'm hoping that it can continue to be good and doesn't fall into the Star Wars trap. I don't know, man. John Favreau is kind of the man, so he's like, I really like everything he's been, like, in a, in a production or, like, executive role in. Mm-hmm. Um, I've pretty much liked everything he's done, so... I don't see that changing unless they, like, oust him and replace him with somebody dumb or something. Yeah. Uh, there is one thing. So, you know, so they have that uh, that big, uh, like, po- like not not really poster. What, what do you call that? That, like, uh, like that teaser image that they show all the time where it's uh, the Mandalorian and it's that one girl who used to be a rebel and then the IG-11. Yeah. Um, so they have those three on there and I'm like, he was in like the, the first episode and she was in episode four and they all went their separate ways and one of them's dead. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of hoping well, they bring another IG because, uh, Taika Waititi was amazing in that. I freaking loved him. It seems like everyone's kind of dancing all around like these projects too. Like Taika Waititi has been like involved in so many things lately. Oh uh, yeah. Did, did you get to see Jojo Rabbit? No, you were texting oh, me about goodness. it, I think. It's so good. I think Caleb went and saw it, but I never went and saw it. Is that, was that the Nazi one? Yes. Yeah, I wanted to see it because we saw the preview for it here uh, before something. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, this looks super interesting. It, it was very – it's it's definitely a movie that they, they, f- they flip everything on you. The first half of the movie is – like it's funny it's great and then the second half they're like we're gonna tear your heartstrings (laughs) (laughs) they're like jk they were like yeah 
It's like, you guys know how this is going to go, right? We've said that this is like in Germany in 1945. Y'all know how this ends. <laughs> Not well. Yeah, I need to check it out. I did see that. I think it got a limited release here, but I need to check it out when it comes out. Yeah, I was like. To like oh, Netflix man. or something. Oh, geez. So uh, what do you got on tap coming up soon? episode wise yeah man um so when this drops i will have released uh we just did a we're doing like a bit of a series right now on um uh bands like uh either bands or like albums that were like a big influence to like a lot of like uh people that i've had on previously so we just did an episode on sugar colts palm trees and power lines it's been out 15 years this year and uh, it was just like a band like a lot of us were into at that time. Like in that album had like a lot of great hits on it. But yeah, at the time of this, uh, when this drops, that'll be out um, uh, the same day. So nice. check this episode out. Check our episode out. And then you'll be a happy, you'll be a happy person. You going to get anybody from All American Rejects? I mean, they're, they're Okies. I need to, man. I need to. I'm going to need to see who I can get a hold of for that. That'd be really fun, huh? Ask, uh, ask Caleb if he can dig around and get you only because of uh, this, uh, the place that we used to work for, Prom, like the last, I think like the last year that they did it or the year, like this, either the second to last year that they did it or the last year that they did it, they were one of the guest the, uh, singers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe somebody over there has still got the, the contact email. I'll get the connect, see if I can get him to give me some info for sure. <laughs> yeah, they were they were great. Like so like listening to them was like, wow, they still sound great. <laughs> That's tight. I mean, yeah, they're good. I mean, I like they've always been good, so it's like it's just like a staple, you know. Oh man. Uh let's see. We've got a we've got a Dragon Prince season three episode coming up. We've got uh some of the cast members on and we're gonna talk about uh season three. It's gonna be a full spoiler. We gave it a couple weeks, so if you haven't watched The Dragon Prince, why? Um, you got three seasons <laughs> that you can binge. Easy peasy. And then you get to listen to us with some of the cast. And we're going to talk our favorite stuff, our favorite scenes. They're going to talk about, give us all that juicy, you know, BTS stuff. All that all that fun. Roll Nas. Oh, man. All right. So, Harold, where can everybody find you social media wise? Sorry that this, guys, yeah, by the way, sorry that this was like a rambly episode. <laughs> I think they, I think they know you by now. One would so hope. Like, one would hope if you're listening expected. to this, like you know that we tangent a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, I release episodes every week as Tunes Tunes podcast T U N E S slash T O O N S. Uh, we're on you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. Oh man, what about you personally? What if they want to get to know Harold? Oh man, well that's easy because it's just Harold's story. Uh, H A R O L D S T O R E Y. I think on Twitter it's a Harold story. So at a, and then Harold story, my name. So nice. Uh, and, uh, Yeesh. you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at animation station podcast, Twitter at animate podcast. All of our episodes are available. iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google play, YouTube, and on our website, animation station podcast, Dot com. Thanks again to uh, Tricos Entertainment uh, for letting us watch uh, Finding Santa. Again, you can get Finding Santa on all of the digital streaming platforms. December 3rd, again, that's Amazon, iTunes, um, you know, Fandango, Google Play, Vudu, all the all the cool places. Vimeo. Um, is Vimeo's primarily, that's more of like a, like a, like a UK thing, right? I don't know. I know a lot of people that do like video, like uh, our video guys, like pretty big on Vimeo. But okay. I don't know if it's more of like an industry first it, type. You know of what? Thing that makes more what? sense. If more of an industry thing, mm, that makes sense. All right, yeah, but yeah, definitely check them out. Yeah, and we'll put we'll put links and everything. Uh, we'll even put the, uh, we'll put the link to uh, Tricoast on there, so you can go get them. We'll put all of Harold's links as well in the in the show notes. Um, so yeah, so thanks a lot everybody for coming on, letting to listen to us ramble. Um, go watch the Mandalorian, go watch Finding Santa, go watch the Dragon Prince, and tell Disney Plus that you want Charlie Conway to do an all female <laughs> Mighty Ducks. Quack quack, hashtag quack quack, or is it quack quack quack? It's three quacks, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Quack quack quack. 
All right, jeez. So for the Animation Station Podcast, I'm Josh. And for Toons Toons Podcast, I'm Harold. Bye-bye, little butterfly. Bye. Quack. 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 I was waiting I was waiting for you to jump in there. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs>